Hi, this is uh, Tutor Nick P, and today this is uh, Lesson 54. Today we're going to look at the difference between extinct, endangered, and threatened. Uh, yeah, I, I think even sometimes some native speakers uh, might get confused about this. Uh, most know the difference between extinct and endangered. They know endangered population of the animal is probably really low, or the plant is really low. Uh, they get a little confused when they start to hear threatened. They, they, it kind of all blurs, and they kind of all think it's the same thing. So um, I'm going to try to clarify a little bit of it today, because uh, these are the three main ones that we come across. There are actually some more, uh, but let's let's go over these three first. Uh, extinct is probably the easiest one. Uh, an animal, plant, or language that no longer exists is extinct. So basically means we are down to zero, or at least zero that we know of. Uh, so, all right, first example, very good. Uh, dinosaurs have been extinct for eons, for, I don't know, thousands and thousands, and some people might even think millions of years. Um, okay, number two, uh, they are still finding carcasses, well, the dead body of an animal, carcasses, of extinct mammoths in Siberia. Remember, mammoth, that's that, uh, uh, ancient sort of an elephant looking uh, animal that looks like our elephant today but uh, a lot more hairy um, kind of a reddish hair and their tusks tend to be longer uh, you, you know again if you think of the uh, cartoon Ice Age the, uh, the, uh, the elephant char character animal in that one was a mammoth perfect mammoth uh, alright so number three uh, the character of the saber toothed tiger from the animated movie Ice Age is an extinct animal. Yeah, so if you want to think about some extinct animals, you can think of the cartoon movie Ice Age. They've had several of them now. I think they're up to like four, five, six, something like that. Um, okay, so let's take a look at endangered then. So what does endangered mean? Now, animals or plants that are endangered are at serious risk of extinction. So they're still around. We still have them. It's just a matter of how many uh, all there. Uh, there are different levels of uh, endangered. There's endangered, and then later on I might tell you about like critically endangered. Critically endangered means the number is much, much even lower. Uh, so there's even different levels to that. So uh, let's look at the first one here. Uh, the blue whale is listed as an endangered species. Sure. Uh, the numbers have uh, gone down. Uh, the giant panda has been on the endangered list for decades, but uh, their numbers have been increasing in recent years, and, you know, the Chinese government has gotten very strict about controlling it, so uh, they may actually get off uh, the list pretty soon. Um, okay, and then we could say here the bald eagle has been removed from the endangered species list in 2007. And this is one I always remember when I was growing up uh, that mentioning, but uh, apparently it's not on the list anymore. The numbers have gone up enough. They're, they used to be worried about it. Uh, you know, the poisoning of the bald eagle. Now that now they seem to be okay. So, all right. So let's take a look at this next one that we sometimes hear about. We sometimes hear threatened. A threatened plant or animal is likely to become endangered in the near future. So this is even a category before it. So they're not endangered yet. Their numbers are not low enough to really be uh, on the endangered list. So threatened is, is even much further back. So you have extinct, you have endangered, and then you have threatened going back that way. So, all right, let's take a look with threatened. Uh, in 2017, the bumblebee has moved from a threatened species to an endangered species. Now they are actually endangered, or um, at least certain species of them. Uh, the bumblebee in, in America. Uh, so you, you kind of move in that order. Um, Here's one that comes up a lot in class, and I don't know, sometimes it was misleading, and maybe the way the media reported it. Uh, many people question if the polar bear um, should be listed as a threatened species. Uh, yeah, the, a lot of the reason they question it is because the numbers of the polar bear are not really very low, and, and they, they actually tend to be increasing uh, in recent years. So that's why a lot of people are questioning it. Uh, it got on the list because of fear of global warming. Um, and they were worried that their habitat might become threatened. But a lot of that hasn't really panned out. And uh, just like we see here, I mean, this is why I even wrote the, the number of the years. 
That's why some people question it. Uh, I think in the 1960s, they counted, they, they estimated there was between 8,000 and 10,000 polar bears. In 2005, when they put them on the list, the number was already double. It was 20 to 25,000 uh, estimate at that time. Uh, so even at that time, in 2005, when they put them on the list, it was higher than it had ever been in the whole 20th century. And, and recently, when they've checked, recently, 2017, the numbers, again, have grown. Uh, so now it's estimated there's anywhere between 23,000 and 32,000. So uh, some people question if they should be on this list at all. Now, of course, uh, some people, if you believe in global warming, you, you might still fear that maybe they should still be there. But there's a lot of people who question it. Okay. Um, and just to let you know, I mean, there are other categories. Uh, most of the time I hear it referred to as threatened, even though technically it might be called near threatened. So that's why I put the parentheses around that. There is actually a, um, a category between threatened and endangered, which is called vulnerable, but I rarely hear it mentioned in articles or news stories. Uh, but uh, this is the way... It kind of follows this, this, uh, this sort of calculation. So they said vulnerable, like if the population has decreased anywhere from 30 to 50 percent, you know, in decline. I guess from its height, whenever they measured its height was the high point. Uh, then they think it, it should be like in the vulnerable category. And uh, endangered would be anywhere from 50 to 70 percent. Um, decline in population from its from a high point that they know of. Uh, critically endangered. Uh, remember, we do hear the term critically endangered. That does come up sometimes. That's 80 to 90 percent uh, population decline. So that's more seriously. Yeah, a lot of times when you hear the numbers of some animal is under a hundred, or only a couple of hundred, or maybe even uh, under a thousand. Uh, but really, the difference is like where the number started and where it went down to. That's why today a lot of times I might hear of animals on the endangered list where they are, they still have 20, 30,000 left, but that's because they're coming from a number that was well into the hundreds of thousands or, uh, you know, possibly even like a million or something. So that's why they're on the list where something like the polar bear, <laughs> which their numbers are actually growing, uh, still may only have 20 to 30,000, but they're, it doesn't seem like they're in danger of disappearing because their numbers are increasing. Okay, and then we also have um, another category here, extinct in wild. Uh, that would mean in the wild there's just about zero left, but we do have some, maybe in some zoos, there might be still some specimens left of this animal, or in some very uh, protected uh, you know, habitats of uh, or uh, reserves, animal reserves, maybe are holding some, and um, so they're not technically really in, in the wild. And of course, extinct is easy. Extinct means that they're gone, zero, no more left. Okay, well, I hope that kind of clarifies or makes it clearer, because you do come across these terms. I really only focused on the three main ones that we um, that we come across a lot in articles and and we hear in the media. Um, okay, well. Hope that clarifies it. Thank you for your